Hello and welcome back to the Sam Beast YouTube channel. Today we are finally getting around to publishing our How AI Really Can Help with ITAM Processes. This was meant to go live last year and it was meant to be presented at the BCS, but unfortunately we got the dreaded COVID. Yes, it was still around, but thrilled to say that we can now do the webinar now. As always, if you've got any questions or comments or anything you want to discuss about this webinar, my contact information will be in the description box. Again, apologies, no fancy camera for this one. Just going to do the webinar. It's all about the content and we've got some really good videos coming out with the camera and a fancy microphone uh, over the coming weeks, starting off next Wednesday. So make sure that you look out for that one. So. Can AI really help with ITAM processes? First of all, let me just introduce myself. So my name's David Foxen. I've been an ITAM consultant for over 15 years now, which makes me feel incredibly old. Um, oh, wow, looking at my preview, I'm very white. The sun is beaming through my window on this glorious January morning. It's just turned uh, 2024, so happy new year to everyone. Um, apologies, yeah, for the whiteness then. I mean, I am white and pasty and ginger anyway, but that's very white and pasty, but never mind. Uh, yeah, 15 years of ex experience, currently working with clients on full-scale ITAM implementation maturities, speaking at events globally throughout those 15 years. Founded Sam Beast Consulting in 2018 uh, and haven't looked back since then very fortunate enough to be item consultant of the year 2022 um, and just some general things about me i've got a, a six-year-old son now it was his birthday a few weeks ago and i'm a massive fan of luton town football club so please don't now dislike this video just because uh, you are a, a fan of a rival team come on please <laughs> so let's have a look then at the agenda and what we're going to be discussing today have a look at AI and ITAM and how it's currently working in the present. And then we're also going to look at how AI and ITAM are going to work in the future. And just some ideas that I have, some things that I've been reading, things that I've been seeing out in the field uh, and how I think that this can really benefit the IT asset management world. Uh, I also want to reassure you that this is not the end of ITAM. You're not going to lose your jobs. So please stop scrolling on Indeed and other job site boards. It's really not going to be the end of ITAM. Every, the virtualization was the end of ITAM. Cloud was the end of ITAM. Everything is the end of ITAM. But the AI will not be the end of ITAM until we get to super AI and everything is the end because AI will become far superior to all of us as human beings and that's it. And ITAM will be the least of our worries by then. But so let's look at present day AI and ITAM. And there's a number of ways that artificial intelligence is starting to creep into the IT asset management realm, if you like. For example, I'm sure you're more aware of chat GPT. Chat GPT is in my opinion, a really fantastic tool. It's great to ask it loads of questions that you don't know the answers to. It's great to try and trick it as well to see if it's going to get something wrong. And it is learning, you know, all of the information taken on chat GPT was, I think, before 2021 or something like that. But there's some really useful information that you can get from there for IT asset management. We should have a look at some examples in a second, but we can ask ChatGPT about ITAM policies, about processes, and about some controls as well. We've also got some level of automated workflows for ITAM in specific technologies that are out there, such as processes being automated, such as the reharvesting of software licenses, the redeploying of software licenses, even some notifications about hardware that's not been used for a specific period of time. Granted, you have to create some of the parameters around the workflows. However, it is all automated and some of these technologies are actually learning as they go along to understand how they can how they can be more efficient in that process and give you the options as to whether you're going to take their advice on board or not. You can completely ignore it or you can say, yeah, I want to change my workflow for the better and see how we can really uh, move this process on moving forward. There's also some level of intelligence to give you suggestions on software optimization and potential savings. Really useful. This has been around for years now within a lot of the high end ITAM tools and software licensing tools. They look at your consumption usage. They look at your license metrics. They look at your installs or your usage or your deployments, and they start making suggestions as to how you can right size, how you can save money, how you're non-compliant, how compliant you are and have licensing pools, etc. So that's already in place. We're already taking advantage of that. If you are lucky enough to have a dedicated ITAM technology with that capabilities. 
And there's also some level on suggestion on when to replace hardware based on standard support and warranty dates, extended support, etc. Again, this is all information that you're having to feed um, the technologies, which is what basically artificial intelligence is. You have to start feeding it. It starts to have to have a base foundation to then start developing its knowledge and expanding its horizons. The hardware support and warranty information, for example, can either come from you importing data into your asset management database, or it can actually come from APIs with your hardware vendors. But it needs that bit of information to get it going, to get it to understand what the output is going to be and what you're trying to make it to achieve. So there are still challenges with artificial intelligence. It is by no means there, mature, done and dusted, fully trustworthy, etc. We still require manual verification and reviews. And what is powered by AI, machine learning, it's not always accurate and trustworthy. Like I said, there's still a lot of information and data that it just isn't quite right. It's not in the way that a, a human would have done a process or a policy or done some analysis, especially in the ITAM realm. And we'll have a look at it in a second. But if you ask it to build a policy, it, it does a very good job at building out a, a basic one. But there's still, you know, you still need to modify it for your organization and make it work for you. So it's not the be all and end all at the moment, but it is a fantastic supporting tool, if you like, uh, for your ITAM function and your organization. It's it's more around that rather than take it as gospel, take it as word. It's more of a it's a good way to give you some foundational information, but you're going to have to work on it for your organization. So let's have a look then at some of the examples that you can currently get uh, through AI, mainly ChatGPT uh, in the documentation realm. So for example, you can go on ChatGPT and you can just say, write an IT asset management policy, including hardware and software asset management for a global enterprise company. You can be far more specific specific than this. I just wanted a, a good example and a, kind of like a broad overview of the capabilities of what um, AI can do in terms of building out your, your documentation. And within a matter of seconds, you can physically see ChatGPT writing out all of these different headers, uh, subject matters and columns, etc. It gives you a nicely structured, pretty basic, but still has some really useful information, ITAM policy. Um, and this ITAM policy, it, it can form a really good basis if you don't have anything in place at the moment. Think about it. If you've not got anything in place and you need to do a couple of pages or, you know, may, you may even need a really detailed policy depending on um, what your policy documentation looks like within your organization. But this can really give you a great foundation that you can build upon, save you a bit of time. Obviously, you need to read it, you need to review it, you need to double check it, you need to make sure that it's all relevant um, and information that's actually going to be applicable to your organization that you can then go and implement. But it gives you a good framework, it gives you a good basis, gives you a good bit of information. It's all right, you know, it's, it's quite good. Uh, and if you don't like that option within ChatGPT, you can just go and regenerate it. There's a button down in the right hand corner there called regenerate. And you can just do this you know, as many times as you need within the, the license you have for ChatGPT. So you can start building out the skeleton, the foundations, the parameters for an ITAM policy. You can also be specific and ask it to do a hardware, software, software licensing, FinOps, cloud, whatever the case may be. It's there. It takes all of that information and gives you some really good <laughs> ideas on how to build your policy. Now, please do not just go and copy and paste this, send it off to your superiors and say that this is your policy because it won't work. It won't be fit for purpose. And like I mentioned in the previous slide, with some of this information, it can be very clear that it wasn't written by a human. Just some of the language, the way it's laid out, it... It, you can just tell it's not being human driven. Um, and unfortunately, I have seen some documentation recently with um, a client who wanted me to review their uh, software asset management documentation that someone else had done. Unfortunately, it was so almost word for word from ChatGPT. 
So you have to be careful. You have to be mindful. You have to take this as a good basis and foundation, but make it your own policy related to your organization, because otherwise it's not going to work. And it's not going to fly if you ever get internally or externally audited for your ITAM function. You can also ask it to write specific requests. And in this case, just I wanted a basic software request process. That's all I needed. Uh, and it gives you, the again, the information and the ideas on how you can build one. Now, it doesn't actually build the Visio flow or whatever your diagramming tooling of choice is, but it almost gives you kind of like a work instruction or a standard operating procedure on how this process should work. Again, please do not take this as gospel. This should not be just copied and pasted and hey, ho, you've got a software request process or whatever process you're looking at. Use it to give you ideas, use it as a foundation, use it so that you can then create your own process. But again, really useful, great way to kind of put yourself on the right track, understand how something should be laid out. Um, and it, it's all AI driven. You know, anyone can use ChatGPT with a free license and get this kind of information. So if you're struggling for time or you've got uh, an apprentice maybe or, or, you know, an administrator that's not used to writing this documentation, you can ask ChatGPT to give you the framework, but then ask them to go out and investigate how to modify this, how to change it, how to adapt it so that it's relevant for your item function, your organization. It's a great starting point. It really is. So the current AI and machine learning influences, uh, there's a lot of additional things that really cool things I have to say that I'm seeing out there. Um, a lot of things that also I can believe will be enhanced even further in the future with AI as AI starts to learn more about IT and about technology uh, and just as AI starts growing as it is, you know, I think I read somewhere that we're only using like 0.009% or something of its capabilities. And they even chat GPT and, and some of the things that these huge global organizations that rely on AI are using are only using 2% of its capabilities. So we're nowhere near seeing how far AI can go yet. But yeah, so there's some things that I'm starting to see already be implemented that I definitely think can grow. Manually created chatbots as part of self-service portals. This is a really cool idea, something that takes away a lot of the administration for an IT asset management team. Uh, this is basically where they have created in a tool like ServiceNow uh, as part of your self-service portal when a user goes in to request hardware or software, that instead of going in and clicking like a Amazon style shopping experience, it asks the user a number of questions. Um, so, for example, uh, a user submits a, a request and they need software. This will ask it what kind of software. User has to say, say uh, photo editing, for example. And then the way that the organization has created it at the moment is that they have already defined the list of approved photo editing software within the organization. The user selects which one has already been approved. And as part of their other ITAM process, they've already got budget approval. They've already got line management approval. And this just helps speed up that ITAM approval as well uh, and remove some of the time consuming elements of having to go through, check all of your software requests, for example, and say yay or nay. So that's something that's been really cool, but something I think that we can certainly evolve moving forward. The suggested licensing right sizing uh, based on the existing knowledge that that ITAM tool has of that software vendors licensing metrics, its current terms and conditions, its current licensing parameters, licensing use rights, etc. This in the current bundle of machine learning and AI, mainly because, again, this is driven by humans. So a lot of these item companies will have teams that are going through looking at the licensing metrics and putting that into the tool so that their customers can then see all the different licensing models that are available to that particular piece of software so that then they can right size within their own organization to say, right, there's three different licensing options under our agreement. We use per use per user subscription. Therefore, the tool now knows it's per user subscription and it's going to calculate compliance. It's going to track uh, usage uh, and optimization in that way. But again, moving forward, this is a really big area that I think that AI will help improve upon. There's a lot of really cool technologies out there at the moment that are looking at contracts uh, and contract interpretation and contract reading. 
And there's a lot of law firms I know at the moment looking at some case studies that are actually using these contracts to go through software agreements and pull out the key bits of information. And these agreements could be tens or hundreds of pages long that are all in legalish talk. It's not something that we can really properly understand. Uh, that's something we'll go on in, into the, in the, the next slides, but it's something that's really interesting that maybe we could and hopefully will adapt into IT asset management, IT as a whole, technology as a whole, to go through some of these contracts and really translate what they're saying so that ITAM professionals can understand what they're saying, they can understand the licensing terms, what they can and cannot do, etc. But yeah, that's something that we'll, we'll touch upon in, in a future slide as well. Uh, suggested scenario mapping um, to uh, identify cost saving opportunities and unused licenses. A lot of tools have this already and it's really, really useful. Um, it ultimately almost does a lot of that internal auditing for you so that you don't have to go out and do or trigger all of your manual audits or your emails, etc. It, it kind of gives you a head start in that respect already. And this is really useful in the SaaS space when it's coming out of your OPEX costs, uh, you know, which are ultimately hits the bottom line. And if it goes through and it tells you where you could potentially save monthly subscriptions, where you could save money on your true up for your SaaS stuff, amazing, you know, fantastic. That's exactly what we need. Um, it also currently shows the compliance position. This kind of goes back to the suggested on scenario mapping, right sizing and ELPs. Um, again, this is based on what some people at the tool company have, have inputted as being the licensing models for that particular vendor and then also what your usage is. So. Yeah, it's 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 kind of AI, but it's 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 almost AI driven by humans still to kind of give it that base knowledge so that it can then go out and use that base knowledge to give you some suggestions on how you can save money, become compliant, right size, etc. And finally, we mentioned it at the beginning, but the automated process workflows in service management tools. Um, this is a lot of the tools now have these run books, they have these playbooks, they have these processes, whatever the terminology may be, where that you can tell it to look for specific parameters and it will go and either it could automatically reclaim the license for you. It could trigger an email sequence to someone who's got uh, a piece of hardware that they're not using or have got multiple hardware when they should only have one or they've got an unapproved piece of software, an unapproved piece of hardware, etc. So again, it's just doing all those manual time consuming jobs that ITAM used to do and doing it automatically for you now through these automated process workflows that you have built, but that does the almost the transactions for you of doing it every single day, every month, checking for you, giving you that summary, that report on where you could potentially save money through hardware and software or even just like a user verification audit, you know, instead of you going out asking people, do you still have this phone, laptop, iPad, you know, the tool can do it for you and, and give you the results back for you. But that's what it currently is at the moment. And again, this is a, another exciting area where these technology companies and ITAM as a whole can really kind of enhance this through the use of AI. Uh, but they're, the key thing with artificial intelligence and ITAM at the moment is that it still requires human intervention, creation, effort and validation. Good book that I completely forgot the name of and should remember it, but it was talking about how we're still in the early days of artificial intelligence. The AI alignment problem, I think is what it was called. And it was talking about how in the early days of Google and Microsoft, when they were building out their AI platforms, it was getting so much wrong. And it still gets so much wrong. There's still a lot of things that artificial intelligence doesn't nail. It doesn't quite understand yet, which is why we still need human interaction. It was the same when everything went to virtual. It was the same when the cloud came along and it's still not the death of ITAM. ITAM just will not die. It needs too much human interaction, human knowledge and common sense, which unfortunately computers don't currently have. But the future looks really interesting, really exciting, and it's something I am most definitely looking forward to adopting, testing out, having a play about with, etc. I mentioned in a previous slide about how the AI industry experts clarify AI as currently being narrow or weak. We are only seeing in the best cases with these huge enterprise organizations, 2% of artificial intelligence actual capabilities. So if you think this is cool, 
And if you think this is really interesting, we've only seen 2%. And, and we haven't even seen that. These big organizations that are ahead of the game have seen that. We've only seen like less than 1%. So there's a lot more to come, which is also why it kind of gets a bit scary and why I can understand there are people like Elon Musk telling world leaders that we need to really set out the controls and the framework now so that it doesn't go crazy in the future and, and take over the world. So I'm sure over the past few weeks and months, you've heard a lot about Microsoft Copilot. In fact, there's going to be a Copilot button on Windows keyboards moving forward. No, no idea where it's going to go, but there's going to be a Copilot. Now, Copilot looks really exciting for Teams meetings, being able to clarify all of the action points, summary on what was discussed based on your voice as well. You don't even have to type stuff. Uh, it can arrange meetings for you. It can look through specific emails and give you summaries. Like this thing looks like it's going to hopefully save an awful lot of admin, an awful lot of time, but it'll also help with things like Excel analysis, looking at different documentation. I mean, you know, this thing I understand from Microsoft employees are very excited about it. And from what we've seen so far, looks very cool. It's well worth actually having a look at some of the free courses on the Microsoft learning path on Copilot if you want to know more information, because they are they're really good and it gives you more of an understanding of what Copilot is. But this could help massively in the future with ITAM uh, and more on that as to why uh, in a bit. We've also got ChatGPT version 4, which is what I, I subscribe to because I'm, I'm really interested in that kind of thing. And beyond what, what's going to happen in the future with things like ChatGPT and other AI platforms, how are they going to evolve? We've got Google Bard as well now, which has joined the front. AI chatbots, which will take away any kind of human interaction when people are requesting things like hardware and software. Imagine that. That would just be unbelievable, it, even, even in your personal life. There's chatbots already, and some of them are broken because you still end up going over to a human. But it could have it all resolved by AI and a chatbot with no human interaction. We've got AI contract analysis, like I mentioned beforehand, where they're going through hundreds and hundreds of pages of contractual information, summarizing it into a one pager, into language that you can actually understand. And also AI generated ITAM lifecycle management. There's a lot of stuff happening in this space, in particular with some of the large hardware vendors, um, with the the warranties and the retirement dates, et cetera. We'll touch upon that in a second, but that's gonna be really interesting moving forward. And again, it's gonna help us a lot internally within organizations as well. If we have clear defined parameters on our hardware refresh patterns, which has already been generated based on when we purchased it, based on our internal lifecycle dates, based on warranty, you know, we have a lot of this information already in the AMDB, but we have to put that info in. We have to have an API with the vendor to get the warranty information. But moving forward, it's going to be unbelievable and we don't have to worry about any of that kind of procurement information, any of that lifecycle data, because it's going to be automatically populated. AI will go out there, it will find it, find the serial number and populate all of that information. And I've seen, again, it's really worth having a look on YouTube at some of the videos on how they think AI is going to go out and do this moving forward. Well worth a watch. And it really does get me excited about taking away some of that administration pain that we have in ITAM. So looking at the road map for things like Copilot and other document AI technologies, you could feed it loads of different bits of information and say, I want a two page policy based on this document, this document, this document, this document, etc. You could throw loads of documentation at it and it will create a, a succinct, <laughs> easy for me to say, policy, process, work instruction document, whatever you want it to be. And it will do all of that automatically. There's a lot of um, Copilot in particular, I know, looking at the roadmap for that and how that's going to work in the future. That's one of the key selling points uh, of using Copilot moving forward. And I mean, if I can throw five different documents and tell it, you know, a security policy, a procurement policy, hardware, software, item, whatever, and say, right, summarize all of these to include all of the key points in one page or two pages that we can use for communication or that we can use for a webinar, an internal deep dive session for internal education and comms, like it would just be so good. It would be really, really good instead of having to go through and pick bits out yourself. Again, obviously, we don't know how far AI is going to get in this space, but I would still imagine that some human interaction will be kind of required to go through and validate it before you do anything. 
process flows will be living documents. I can fully see this happening. We're already looking at, um, you know, of it, these workflows in ITSM tools that you can literally move about and see working. I think this is going to be the case moving forward. There's going to be constant updates based on ways of working, different technologies that are being used, other documentation, meeting summaries that people have discussed. So, for example, you could be talking about uh, an ITS disposition process that's not quite working. And in the meeting, you could have all of your local tech guys on board and say, no, this bit's too slow. This bit doesn't work. I can take that information and tweak the process for you. Therefore, process is you know, long gone will the days of a process being a PDF that you have to go through, get approval for, then it's published, then you have to review every six months or a year. No, 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 none of that. It will be a living document that's constantly updating, constantly evolving. AI is going to understand which steps work, which don't, which takes time, which is too quick which causes blockers, where there's problems, et cetera, and either implement changes automatically, depending on what how you've configured it, or still have that human sign off to say, yep, that tweak looks okay. Yep, that's fine. Let's go with that. But this is something that, again, it's when doing research for this, this presentation, this webinar, there was so much really cool information on what the potential of AI is in this space. Now, this is where I do kind of go, oh, uh, policies and process documentation. That's kind of my jam. That's kind of my thing. But I definitely still think that humans are going to have to verify, validate, test, etc. Any tweaks or process changes that AI make. When AI starts overruling us and ignoring us, that's when we need to worry and run. But hopefully that will be long past our time of working. I firmly believe as well that with artificial intelligence, compliance will be almost a thing of the past. I think that a lot of software vendors are going to use AI moving forward to basically ensure that this happens. So it's going to use information that it's gathered to see that there's compliance issues. We may even see automated procurement flows that buy the shortfall of licenses. I've seen, again, when looking at this, I've seen a lot of automated procurement processes that are potentially out there, especially for hardware stock, which, you know, we currently can create workflows and processes to trigger that, but it still needs human interaction. However, moving forward about automating procurement, I noticed that they mentioned about software uh, agreements automatically being renewed and, you know, all the money going out, et cetera, but also how software vendors could use that information, use AI to automatically charge you in the event that you become non-compliant, aka compliancy no longer becomes a thing. What will become a thing then is making sure that you're right sizing your licenses because software vendors are going to be more than happy to take more money away from you, but they're not going to look at how you're not using the software so that you don't spend money with them. So there's going to be AI that's going to help you, but I also, on the other side of that, there's also obviously going to be AI that helps the software and hardware vendors that are out there so that they benefit and they can generate some revenue and some money. It's going to be all about financial optimization from an ITAM perspective. It already kind of is. I know there's still a big element of license compliance within ITAM. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I fully understand that. But again, with since you know 2020 and how the world is, et cetera, at the moment, it's a real focus on financial optimization. And I think that that's just going to continue to grow, especially if software vendors do develop ways that AI can identify if you're non-compliant or not using the software in the way that you should be. So it's going to become all about financial optimization, really, you know, only paying for what you need, et cetera. Uh, we may even see some new licensing models moving forward that literally on a monthly basis where you don't have to commit to three years and then realize that your organization's getting rid of 20% of the staff and you're stuck on a three year deal. Maybe we'll have more flexible licensing arrangements in that way with the support of AI and the fact that you agree that the software vendor can see everything that you're using. So if you go over, it'll automatically purchase the, you know, the overage every month, whatever the case may be. But I really think that this is something that we could potentially look at in the future. And green software as well. Green software that is helpful for the environment that you know there's a lot of um there's a really useful linux foundation green software course actually that's free uh, if you're interested in that but about how software is being developed what resources it's using whether it's environmentally and eco-friendly whether it's sustainable etc just like we are um with the hardware side of things i think there's going to be a focus on green software in the future as well and ai is going to play a key role in identifying 
green software, maybe some inefficient software, uh, and also help put that towards your sustainability and your green IT reports that your organization publishes, your your goals, et cetera. How many, how many trees you've saved, how many trees you've planted is the equivalent of moving to green software and green IT, all of the, the buzzwords uh, when it comes to sustainability and green IT. And also something else that I personally would love to see, and you can kind of get this already with some ai um, generated video but again it's nowhere near as good as if a human was doing it but interactive work instructions containing video guides for all your processes i in the future again it's stuff that feels so far in advance but it's stuff that gets you excited because you watch these videos you read these articles you read the books and you understand ai's capabilities about being able to drag and drop a process or a set of instructions and have ai create an immersive interactive video based on that i think this would be so useful for work instructions so at the moment whenever i go into a client and they want me to create a work instruction a process standard operating procedure racy whatever I do the video guides as well, as well as the written ones, we do video ones as well, because let's face it, the next generation are all YouTube, Netflix, on-demand streaming. They they learn better and they follow instructions better when they've got a video guide. That takes some time to film, to edit, to make sure that it's in the work instruction, to publish, etc. If you could just drag and drop a couple of documents and say, AI, generate me a step-by-step -step guide on how this works in a professional way as well, not just me hitting record on Teams or whatever, in like a really professional, smooth way that shows you your environment, your portals, your service management tool, your item tool, whatever it may be. That would be so good. Imagine the customer service going through the roof from an ITAM perspective. If all of your processes and documents, you could automatically create video guides or just even video information in a really professional voiceover, cool graphics, cool, you know, screen grabs or even videos of the AI going around a portal, assigning a license, removing licenses. It would just be so good. It would be so good. Uh, and something that I, I think is actually a bit closer than some other bits. I know Copilot is really, you know, that's evolving all the time. You know, they mentioned about the button going out, but I think this could be something that's a lot closer than some other bits in AI as well. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of intelligence um, around AI and ITAM. So we've already mentioned about the contract and, and machine learning side of things, but um, having AI being able to understand software contracts and user license agreement warranty agreements on extended support and and really drill down into that accurately and reflect that in your current consumption and how you're currently using it i, th I honestly think that that's going to be something that's going to be really useful in the future same if you've got new agreements you know these contract tools go through it give you one page give you the bullet points boom done amazing off you go in English. And there is actually already a tool um, called Kira, I think it is, or Kara. I don't know how you pronounce it, but they're already using that in the legal and healthcare industries to go through contracts and, um, and put it into a, a one pager into English that, you know, people are going to understand, etc. And why can't we use that in ITAM? I don't see why we couldn't do that in ITAM. I think also as well, going back to my point about vendors also using AI, that license compliance audit is going to be the thing of the past. You'll be right sizing yourself with the vendor, knowing what's being used out there with AI, you know, having that intelligence to understand it's using the right licensing model to understand where your overage is and then to automatically trigger a procurement process, which is obviously agreed in your license agreement to purchase any um any gap that you have against what you've purchased against what you've used but again it goes back to my point we'd need flexible licensing models that are almost a monthly basis then where if you are not using them all that you then can all true down as well so that you're not overspending but like i said i doubt the software vendors will be proactive in in reducing that bit for you in the hardware space something we already can set process flows triggers for but still needs human interaction and manual efforts is automatically ordering hardware when local stock levels hit their threshold this would be amazing from a consumable standpoint in particular if you literally didn't have to do anything you had a budget already formulated and when you reach your threshold the automated procurement goes out buys it you get a delivery 
you know that that would be so good obviously when it hits certain thresholds on spend there would have to be a, uh, an approval process but you can build that into uh, ai i'm sure ai will learn at what levels a vp and then an svp and then the you know, ceo or whatever needs to approve hardware spend but i think that's something that would be really useful moving forward uh, agile stock management as well tracking stock changes monthly predicting pr peaks and troughs i'm currently doing that manually AI should be able to do that, you know, integrate that into your ITSM tool, look at when you had loads of stock, look at when um, your stock got absolutely rinsed because it was all going out left, right and centre and predict peak months as well, which would be, um, you know, really handy that I wouldn't have to do that um, AI could do for me. Suggesting right hardware spec based on user requirements and previous usage of the hardware, for example, if someone's coming to uh, an end of life refresh and they want a faster machine uh, and the current device has got eight gig and they're requesting 16 gig you can go well ai is actually saying that you never utilized your memory your ram was fine you don't need that we don't need to spend the extra money on that ram you know your hard disk space you know you've got a solid state disk 256 however actually we use the cloud so we're, we're moving that down to a much smaller um much smaller hard drive so that we can save a bit of money but having that spec and that suggestion instead of again having to speak to the user do that user audit to have that information there and then in a really cool succinct way data you know accurate live data this is fact this isn't opinion this is fact we can see how you've been using your your hardware would be superb be so good you could do that for graphics cards as well uh, and also have this information when users are logging itsm tickets because you could have a user that's constantly saying that the um, something's slow, their laptop's slow, when actually it's a software issue rather than a hardware issue. But if you've got that information where you can see the peaks and troughs on, on how that hardware is being used, it will really enable your support teams, your ITSM teams to make an informed decision rather than just going, oh, hardware issue, get rid of this one, we're going to buy a new one, because that's never the answer. Well, it might be the answer sometimes, but nine times out of ten, it's not the answer it might be a user issue it might be a firmware issue it might be a software issue it might be an os issue but hardware itself unless it's old i can't really be a hardware issue can it um also we've touched on this a lot so i'm not going to spend too much time but the financial management side of things right sizing budgeting um also predicted price rises would be fantastic and again, something AI can do, we do, uh, or looking at previous vendors, but it'd be great if within, um, you know, specific tools, you could predict what the price is going to be like next year, the year after, et cetera. For budget planning, I think that would be superb. And same for hardware costs as well, not just software, but for hardware. Based on supply chain levels, life cycle, new model releases, price rises, uh, even force majeure, things that are going on that are outside of everyone's hands, that there's been a flood or a fire or a virus or whatever the case may be, so that we can really understand um, the, the supply chain for the hardware that's going to impact price rises etc etc et really cool to have that insight and that information uh, something that would be so valuable for itam as well automated itam delivery so i mentioned about the chatbots but here's how i actually see it working a user logs onto their self-service the chatbot hello how can i help you today joe it knows the user because the user logged in it's intelligent it's smart joe then replies saying that he wants software that can create and analyze data and present it in a dashboard format for senior management Power BI takes that information, goes, thanks, Joe. Our approved software for this data analysis and presentation, Power BI. We have spare licenses. Would you like to proceed? Joe says, yes, or yes, please, or whatever the case may be. AI will then have links into all of these software portals. It'll automatically do the approval process from a financial standpoint, from a line management standpoint, and from an ITAM standpoint. If, for example, ITAM can say, if these keywords are in this request, approve it. If budget approval is there, line manager approval is there, these are the keywords, approve it, assign the license, etc. AI could then go and assign the license, all still just from this chat, but all still no, inter no human interaction. I'm cracking on with some of my strategic stuff. My team are cracking on with strategic stuff. Users still get a top class service. Win win win-win for everyone and then that license has been assigned to you the software will start installing momentarily we could do silent installs for things that need to be installed or a link to uh, the software if it's web-based or SaaS, etc and then a nice message you know thank you for contacting the service day have a great day that kind of 
warm fuzzy feeling thing but the amount of time that that person would have spent instead of going to itam going yeah we got power bi let me check the portal yeah we got some spare licenses what's the justification again you know some itam teams if you're really mature if you're really slick that won't actually take that long but for other people when you've got hundreds of requests coming in every every week every month it's going to take you some time to go through which has a knock-on effect on the customer service so if you can teach ai to look out for keywords key justifications why not let it do it and of course with my idea of ai right sizing anyway you can never be non-compliant and the cost center will have come a part of this approval flow so itam won't be paying for it even if you are over so oh, it'd be unbelievable it'd be so good so much fun so we've got another example here how can i help you today sarah my laptop's running slowly i need a new one ai will then go and look and say your current asset is actually end of life um, would you like a replacement yes we have actually stock available because it's looking at your stock levels to replace your device. It will then automatically book an appointment with an engineer or look through the co-pilot could get involved here. Look at the calendars of both the requester and someone within the tech team to book an appointment so they can go up to the, the service desk and replace it. And of course, again, the satisfaction from this user is just going to be through the roof. If that device wasn't up for end of life, you could use some of the AI generated performance reports to say, yeah, there's some your OS isn't compatible with this software, for example, or your firmware and drivers are outdated. Let's update it. The possibilities of this are endless. And this is so exciting that we'd be able to take away a lot of the pain that we go through and admins go through in dealing with daily software and hardware requests and have an additional super ITAM resource that can go through and validate this for you. And of course, Sarah's thrilled. She's had a result within a matter of minutes, however long it's taken her to reply and AI to go and find it. She's getting a new laptop tomorrow now at a time that's convenient for her. Amazing. Thanks. AI and ITAM are the best. I mean, this is 10 years. This is going to be in 10 years time. Sarah is going to be a real person. She's going to say that AI and ITAM are the best. ITAM is the best anyway, but that would be so cool. And I honestly think that we can get there. A change of landscape then in the ITAM space. We're going to be focused on more strategic tasks and challenges, as we've just represented. Those mundane ad mini tasks can be handed over to AI. There will be an increase in demand for ITAM technology asset management professionals to support ITAM FinOps and the evolution of AI. Something is going to have to manage this. It's not going to get to a point in our working lifetime where it can just be let loose and go forth and conquer. No, no, no. We still need ITAM involved. Absolutely, ITAM humans still need to be around. Less focus on compliance. We'll have AI contract management reviewing things. We'll have the tool telling us where we're non-compliant. The vendor themselves will have AI to trigger procurement processes in the event that we are over um, subscribed and we're using too many. We need to buy licenses, etc. I'm making this out like this is really flippant and they're gonna you're gonna be buying stuff without approval. But of course, as part of your process, there will be an approval and a validation that you do need to buy this software, uh, which will all be part of I imagine new end user licensing agreements as and I also imagine when you're onboarding that new contract that everyone will be aware of the process when it does have to buy software licenses for overage. There'll be more of a focus on customer services, agility and sustainability, almost adopting to a bit of the FinOps model, whereby FinOps are just looking for the end result. They need to act quickly. ITAM very much at the moment is still very process driven. It's not very reactive um, because there's so many legal parameters around it. There's so much cost around it. But with the support of AI, we could become way more agile and way more sustainable as well. And it'd be vastly improved hardware lifecycle management as well, reducing downtime, slow performing hardware and frustration from end users. If we can get that kind of information, the likes that a next thing, for example, could provide on, on performance stats. But if AI is constantly looking at this, looking at trends, looking at peaks and troughs and providing really, you know, both high level, but also detailed reports for ITAM, service management, tech support, third line, whatever, it, it would be such valuable information and data. And ultimately, a good performing IT function, ITAM, good customer service. Ultimately, you're more likely to re retain talent. If you have an IT team that are slow, they don't listen to you, they don't you know, try and adapt and help you and give you what you need, you're going to get really frustrated users. And ultimately, that could be the difference between someone staying or leaving the organization and going somewhere else. It sounds very dramatic, but that could be the case. 
in the very distant future, there's something called super AI. Super AI is a self-aware artificial intelligence with capacities and capabilities beyond humans. These can outperform any human's cognitive abilities. Now, this is where you should probably be getting on indeed looking for a new job. Because this is where it gets to iRobot kind of levels, like which is why I've got an iRobot image there. This is where it gets quite scary. Um, but we are a long way away from that. Remember, we are at 0.09 or whatever percent of it is that we can see. Huge leading AI companies are only at 2%. Hopefully, the robots and AI aren't going to take over the world just yet. But that is something that they're, you know, they've, they're kind of built maturity scale. And super AI is the top level of maturity. And it's something that is achievable. And if AI keeps learning and keeps building and there's no parameters and there's no framework around it controls, it could get there quicker than we think, which is, again, I go back to why, you know, these geniuses that work in AI and know its capabilities are telling world leaders that we need to start managing it and, and planning for the future so that it doesn't eradicate humanity to get very deep with you. This is an ITAM webinar. That's, that's way too deep for us. Or is it? There's still a lot of issues with AI. It's still very new. There's still a lot of things that could potentially not quite pan out in the way that it could happen. Energy consumption is one thing. Carbon footprint is another thing. The toll it's taking on the environment. There's, there's actually, there's a, there's a great article in there that says about the AI industry could use as much energy as the Netherlands. That's not sustainable. If AI is not going to be sustainable from an environmental standpoint, you know, these big organizations that are investing money, it may turn around and, and just n slow it down a bit until AI can become more efficient, more environmentally friendly. You think about the servers that are hosting all of this information, that's building all of this, it's going to be huge. And then obviously we've got cloud instances as well. Sure, you're reducing your company's environmental footprint and sustainability by moving things to the cloud, but that's still a server somewhere. And same with the same for AI. It's still something somewhere that is consuming energy and having an impact on our organization. Something to think about. So is it going to be super AI? We need to get a few things fixed first. So let's um look at the future and then do a bit of a recap here removes the mundane tasks from it and professionals ai will be a big part of that accurate and automated license compliance and optimization self-service intelligent first line chatbots I, I this i think is something that could be uh, you know a lot shorter in the future that's going to be uh, really useful bespoke item documentation Re remember we mentioned copilot and other document ai where you throw loads of things in and it generates the the documentation for you staying with process flows ra racing matrix work instructions video content etc this is going to be so useful from an item standpoint but remember still going to need human to validate it review it it it's not going to be spot on for your organization just yet uh, and finally irobot taking over the world oops oh, did i leave that in <laughs> I, I meant to remove that too oops <laughs> no i'm joking of course it's not so key takeaways i really hope that you found this useful and there's some key takeaways that uh, uh, there's been a theme throughout this presentation so that's the AI can play a role in item today, but use with caution. Remember, it's not quite there. Likes of ChatGPT can help with suggestions. Suggestions, not the finished product. It's not the finished product for item documentation. Organizations are looking at the use of chatbots to support software and hardware requests. And I think you should have a look at this too. If you have, you know, five, 10 minutes, have a Google, uh, have a look on YouTube, have a look at some of the videos that you can do. Future of AI and ITAM, it needs to be embraced. It's like people that are still kind of closed off on FinOps and stuff like that, don't because it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the future. It's going to happen quite soon as well. And you as a professional and your ITAM function, your organization is just going to get left behind if you don't open your eyes and start embracing all of these changes. AI will also make the mundane task and become an additional asset to your team. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> subtle item joke in there because obviously we manage IT assets and assets to your team. Yeah, you you got it. I didn't need to explain it. Uh, no, it's not the death of item or your jobs. I firmly believe it will actually create more item jobs that are far more fulfilling and strategic in the future. AI can help item to that next level. I firmly believe this. Um, as a side note, we of course must be mindful of the energy consumption and the environmental impact of AI. But at the moment, that's not something for us to worry about uh, because we are not an AI company. We do not have to worry about any of that just yet. But it's something to be mindful of if your organization has a big focus on sustainability. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Before you go, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So thank you very much. Hope to see you again soon at the Sand Beast YouTube channel and happy eye tamming.